All right, we're rolling. I'm Crypto Pio. I'm here with my homeboy, Jcoin, NFT enthusiast. The, he bought NFTs before I did. We're both avid collectors at this point. What up, Jcoin? What up? I'm glad we just aced into the space. How else can you do it? You know? Future you whales. Yeah. yeah, future whales. I've been thinking a lot about that, future whales. I, I like the idea of being future rich. Uh, I pretend that I'm rich right now, but I plan on being very wealthy in the future, and this is going to help me get there. I think that's a very good, uh, a very apt assessment. So here we go. We're on the front page of Nifty Gateway. There's a lot to talk about. I think one thing I'd want to talk to you about is the drop that you bought last night. So let's just uh, take a look at that. Stephen Balte. Stephen Balte was the first thing that caught my eye was that he was from Brooklyn. And what I learned is that apparently he's done a lot of like physical work in Brooklyn, like 3D physical work, and just put it up in Brooklyn for free all around. And what they say is like all of it invokes, I forget how they describe it exactly. Scroll down to the bottom. They describe it as like it, it invokes some like fear and uncomfortableness and grotesqueness. Um, and if you click on Dum Dum, you'll see like some of those descriptions of like it's supposed to bring out really uncomfortable things about you. And I think this is a perfect example of that. <laughs> yeah, so I've watched Dum Dum. <laughs> A bunch of times and uh, I really am like a huge fan of it this one I feel like is actually one of the more tame ones compared to some of the other ones in the drop I also really like that this just kind of keeps looping I think he does a really good job with that um, here I'm gonna pull up so this one I think is probably <laughs> you know what's funny is I couldn't buy it I couldn't do it I couldn't get myself past the idea that this was just too gross it's incredibly gross, um, but I don't know. It does. It generates some sort of feeling inside me. <laughs> this one too. There's something about the way that he has the the human figure, kind of like you know, expanding and retracting. The kind of like gummy, like like right here when it pops. I don't know. There's just something about it that connects with you. In the, you know, whether it's a good way or a bad way or a weird way. And I think that that's what makes you know this particular drop so interesting. There's, there was a couple of things last night when I was looking at it, and you and I have talked about this a lot, but like, what are you trying to identify when you buy a piece? Obviously, a portion of that is you just like it, or at least hopefully you do. Otherwise, I definitely wouldn't recommend buying any Nifty. So like, hopefully you like it. But then the other piece is like, what's, what's different about this? Like, what does it bring out? And one of the things that's interesting about this drop is these are all really popular candies. Like when I start to think about collectibles and things like that, Gushers, Pez, Laffy Taffy, 100 Gram Bars, Dum Dums, like those are extremely collectible and well-known candies that have been around forever, that have gone through iterations of marketing over like 50 years, 100 years in some cases. That's what's cool. It's like there's no other piece on here that's referencing some unique candy. Why Kanye West is sitting on the East Berlin Wall and exploding, I, I couldn't tell you, but that's art if I've ever seen. Yeah, I like the Kanye one. That one got the most mints. Um, you know, it doesn't, it hasn't had the electric performance that we're going to get into that, for example, Gusher did. But I hadn't even really thought in depth about the point you just made about the different kinds of candy. Um, you know, Pez, I think that vintage Pez dispensers, like physical vintage Pez dispensers are a hot commodity. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if we went to eBay right now and looked up like vintage Mickey Mouse Pez dispenser or something, you know, the sales would be through the roof. So that's another thing to think about. Um, yeah, so it looks like there's a lot of flippers with this Kanye. S still though, yeah, but like this, these flippers are all flipping for a profit. For example, the Rick and Morty drawing that I won the other day, people are just cratering it. People are like trying to, yeah, they're just trying to get it off their hands, which is fine because I'm not selling it. It's no big deal, you know, just like for everything else. Look at this one. This is interesting. So once this paper hand gets shaken out, we're, we're looking at a 1500. Yeah. And Clay, let's check out what is what is Dub Dub at. I actually didn't even see. So when we think about like the floor of these prices, I mean, you're looking at, you know, twelve seventy five, twelve ninety eight, but you start to jump pretty quick, man. And once you get past these thousand bucks, you're in twenty seven hundred with only ninety three mints. You start to jump into like two, three, four, or five grand really fast. Straight up, an eight 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 could come through and just sweep the floor here. Or any other whale could come five. through. Yeah, five of them, and and I mean to to totally sweep the floor here, you basically just have to buy eight. Which for a right. whale is no big deal, especially when there's when there's only like ninety something total. Look at Gusher. Oof. Whoa. 
It's wild. It's, yeah. I mean, it's wild. And I think what's interesting about these pieces is because they're such low mints, people will flock toward any of the pieces of this collection. When there's 500 of one and 500 of five others, it's a little more difficult for all of them to rise together. But the combination of all of the mints here, I think we're talking about maybe five or 600 total. I mean, that's crazy. Six pieces. I don't know how open an open edition could have such a small kind of turnout, especially. Yeah, exactly. When you look back, it's out of control. It's completely out of control. Um, to be fair, I did notice a lot of these do have lower mints, right? So we are talking about collections of 10 to 20, 25, right? But I mean, look at these pieces. Let's look at actually go back to the select works, the one that we were just on there, um, second from the bottom. Yep. That piece, Young Love, I saw constantly all over the Nifty homepage, like up to a month ago. I whoa, that's creepy. I bet the <laughs> I, I bet the gold mystery of that thing is ridiculous. I bet the sales volume is just totally out of control because they're slipping hands like crazy. Let's take a look. Um... Okay, so there's only ten of these pieces, mind you, and there's three pages of buys. Like, there's a lot going on. That's wild. It's also wild. Look at this. Like, oh. basically, from Valentine's Day to five days after, from February 14th to the 19th, massive jump, and then you know a few other sales after the fact. You know, no sales since this drop that he just put out. The, I think a big part is when collectors don't want to sell which it seems like with his stuff there just aren't that many available um we clicked on one of them we clicked on one of them right here where no one there. yeah they're just not it's just not for sale like you can't buy it one. it was just withdrawn and taken away yeah that's what gets me going is when i start to see these things and i've been thinking a lot about like what happened early on in the art world physical art world like did this happen? Was there 10 Picassos and someone bought all 10 and just removed them from the market? Like, I don't know anything about that, but this has to reflect the same buying behavior because we're the same kinds of humans. We're just using the internet now, right? So like, how do we draw back the parallels to art history? And like, did this used to happen? I bet, and I bet this is why some of those pieces now go for 500 times as much because there's no supply. There's no availability to purchase them. Straight up. And like when you talk about the traditional art world, I think of the fact that, you know, a, a big part about NFTs is it gives normal people like you and me access to be able to buy art that could eventually become like the priceless art, like the Picassos, so on and so forth. Already seeing that with people. Hopefully we'll see that with PAC. Um, and when I think about that, you know, you, you needed to have access, which in most cases was like a ridiculous amount of money. And people that are buying art for a ridiculous amount of money are not thinking they're going to then sell it for 10,000 bucks more or something. It's 100% a forever hold. They're putting it in their house. They're having dinner parties. They're talking about it. They're watching it appreciate in value at an absolutely ridiculous clip and just positively influence their or impact, I should say, their net worth. So if you sort of treat this stuff in the same way to me this guy balte is a prime opportunity to do that like if i was a rich guy and i could really sweep the floor i would 100 percent sweep the floor on gusher um i think what was the other one taffy right here taffy was doing really well 100 grand is it's gonna do well it just has more men so it just needs more time yeah right? yep but like i mean some of this stuff is crazy and i always wonder like when you think about really rich people when you think about people who you know personally that are really wealthy in the families to me at least growing up in westchester pound in new york everyone had collections of wine and art and i always thought you bought those when you got rich and in fact, I think it was the polar opposite. I think that they purchased those as part of their getting rich. They purchased those collections and those things that now are assets to them that have appreciated and value so much. I don't think that they waited until they were rich to just grow this massive collection, right? So that's what's really different here is like now, like you said, we had the access to that, whereas previously only wealthy people to begin with had access even to get started. Um, and now they're just democratizing that, which is so different. It's wild to think about. Um, I mean, I love this piece so much. There's just it's something so about this piece that cracks me up. The fact that it's like fat Kanye, essentially as an Easter egg is what I'm Humpty thinking. Dumpty or an oh, Humpty Dumpty. Egg. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Definitely. No, it's. I think it's Humpty Dumpty. It's 100% Humpty Dumpty, which is hysterical. Wall, which is the East Berlin Wall. 
well, I'm fairly certain that's the Berlin Wall. Right? Yeah, like you, graffiti and such. You got it before I did, man. You you nailed it. I, yeah, it's a completely wild piece. You know, if I had more liquidity, I'd be going hard on this this drop. The other thing is that like. It's so hard to figure out when you buy at drop if something's going to perform well. Yep. And, you know, you bought this drop. So something in your mind said this is worth buying at drop. And you've been staying away from buying at drop. Yeah. For some reason for this one, there are so – I noticed that immediately there were going to be so few. And I think the part of the reason for that is fatigue because what Nifty Gateway has been doing is trying out new models, right? Some of those models are doing two drops a day. Some of those are doing more open editions than they normally would have in the past versus packs, which were quite limited. So they're opening the supply of the market to get more people interested. Like Nifty's goal is for more people to collect and the ability for more people to collect like opens that up. But when I started to look at this and started to read Discord, which both of us know is where everything happens, everybody said there's going to be limited supply of these. And because there's going to be a limited supply, that to me signals an opportunity to get something that nobody else could have. And that's exactly what I want. And they said there was going to be a limited supply of these because of the fatigue? Like people were already calling that out? Yeah. People were saying in advance that they expected, just based on the transaction history of the marketplace and actually even some of the bugs on the website, like there's a lot of factors that go into that. Because of that, the market is becoming a little bit fatigued. And so this might be one of those drops that actually gets overlooked by an artist who has some of the most valuable art on the platform. And that, to me, was a huge red flag. I'm like, wait, what? Like, I, I want some of the most valuable art on the platform, and I'm certainly happy to pay a thousand bucks for it. So that, to me, was like a big signal. And I'm trying to find those signals because I think those indicate the success of the piece, in some cases more than the piece itself. Which is kind of interesting. You were on it, man. And, and, you know, that just shows how much it pays to be like, you know, really on Discord, even though it can be, you know, it can induce fatigue. And there's seven of these for sale. That's it. That's it. Like, that's totally ridiculous. If you buy a, a $1,775 piece, you go from, like, look at this. There's eight of them. Eight of them. What a joke. Someone also joke. paper handed this for a loss. <laughs> I don't. Well, <laughs> I just don't someone, relate to that at all. It's been one. Yeah, someone just was like, yeah, you know, 1200 bucks. Need to get rid of this thing. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. But that's fine, right? Because they create a market. They show sales history, and that's fine. And to me, it's like if there's a piece that nobody has access to, that's interesting. I'm looking at this one, and I might pull the trigger on something. I act like I think I mentioned I accidentally pulled the trigger on. <laughs> Uh, slime swing last night. Which I think is one of the nicest pieces on the platform. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, it's it's so sick, and I felt like it was gonna maybe generate a cult following. When we talk about slime swing, so just switching gears here for a second, um, I think that young thugs fans have no idea what NFTs are. I think that they're very far from buying an NFT, but I think that this is a piece that'll age well because I just think it's incredible from an art perspective. You know, the 536 minted is not, you know, a crazy amount. And I could see this artist, Rhymes Like Dimes, putting out a lot more really cool stuff like the Mac Miller piece that he auctioned off and having people kind of walk back and, and take a look. So I bought it for 700. It looks like it's sold for 888 since then. I wonder if 888 bought it for 888. Let's see. This is what I started to see, though, right? It's like there is an opportunity to gather these things. And I think, you know, what defined, like, the, the previous historical period of the scenario that we're, like, the macro scenario that we're in was art and music, right? If you think about the 20s, like, the roaring 20s was all defined by art and music. Like, when in our lifetime has anything been defined by art? I would argue none. Since 1990, like, nothing has really revolved publicly around art as a booming sector of an industry and i think it's coming back and i think part of that is because there's so much money floating around the more money that floats around the more pours into art and music and things like that it's just a repeat of history for sure and you know when i think about the 90s and the 2000s i can't really think of a single artist that like emerged in that time period obviously there's like musicians and stuff but sure. in terms of like a fine artist like a, again picasso or like a modigliani or something that was you know a museum artist whether it's a painter or something else 
I just can't think of any. And I think that this medium, you know, this digital sort of space, the NFT space is going to bring that back. Like you're already sort of seeing it with someone like Fawocious here, um, 18 years old, already generating millions of dollars from their art. So my question is like, how long is it going to be? How many millions does Fawocious have to generate before, you know, they become a mainstream person? And I have to imagine it can't be too many more. Like we're already seeing this drop, my biggest miss you tell me to break my rear view mirror all the time without question my biggest miss because i like ferocious i saw i saw the uh the picasso influence in this one there, i mean this thing's layered we could do a whole video just on this thing so i won't go into the details on it too much but it's just been an absolute rocket ship in the past 24 hours it's sold for six grand twice when it cost 1100 bucks when it first came out um, and it's still going. So, I mean, how many pieces does, does Ferocious have to put out that are just straight up rocket ships while being prolific, by the way, because Ferocious has done a ton of drops. So while being prolific, putting out rocket ships before mainstream media outlets or just, you know, social media outlets kind of catch on. They haven't even caught up. And think about it too, right? Like when you think about the people who you will sell this to, if you have a long-term investment horizon, Right, so so you and I have agreed like neither of us are flippers in this marketplace, which play a very important role, but we don't fulfill that role. So for us, like if we were to think about who we're going to sell this art to, it's going to be our kids or teenagers right now, right, who are becoming rich over time, who are becoming more wealthy and gathering wealth. Those are the people who are going to buy this, right? And do you think that? They're only going to purchase physical art when they grew up in a completely digital world. Imagine the people who were born in 2020 into an entirely digital world, right? Like you have to think that those people are going to be more interested in art like this than maybe physical art that they were traditionally. Not to say that physical art is going anywhere, but I think there's space for two. And that's why when I think about the investments and the fluctuations in price, none of that matters. It just, it just doesn't matter because we have we have an asset that no one else can have and we're going to sell it to our kids 100 years from now. <laughs> Straight up. Um, and when I look at the artists that like I have your profile pulled up right here, you know, Dot Pigeon's getting a ton of hype. Trevor Jones, I feel like is just a ticking Number time bomb. That, that is insane. That is insane that you got a sub 500 mint on that. That's nuts. You've had really good luck with the mints. Um, you know, I'm going to make content on Twisted Vacancy because there's a lot of questions that I have about, mm-hmm. and maybe this is borderline, me saying this out loud might get me canceled in the NFT community, but I have questions about the plagiarism because when I was looking at the plagiarism case, and I haven't done the deep dive that I have to do, but when I was looking at the plagiarism case, it didn't look to me like as blatant as everybody on Discord was making it out to be and people on Twitter were making it out to be. Like I really expected it to be that he like copy and pasted either pieces or I thought it was like the whole the whole piece was just totally ripped off. And people were like pointing out basically one part of one piece or you know one part of a few pieces mm-hmm. kind of looking similar to another artist's work, which I get can you know put you in a gray area. But I don't know. I need to do a deeper dive to see just how you know blatant the plagiarism is before I totally throw him under the bus and before I totally think that his pieces don't have long-term value because there's already a story that's developed like we're talking about it right now I mean the age-old quote right like good artists borrow and great artists steal like that's a very real thing I think it's important to recognize in the art world and one of the challenges I think with the community right now is the community relative to others is very small right like the community of followers on nifty gateway for example in the discord channel I think there's 30,000 people that might seem like a lot to us because last week it was 15,000, but think about how many users are on the Facebook platform, a billion, right? So like, we're not even close. It's a really small community. And I think what that lends itself to is also some like unnecessary aggression towards artists who don't speak English. Right? <laughs> like, and that's a really challenging environment to be when you support international artists, like an Indonesian artist, like Twisted Vacancy. Don't get me wrong. Like there's probably all sorts of problems with that and all sorts of like things that he did wrong or she, but to attack someone like that, I think it's just wildly incorrect. And so when I started to think about these artists, like buy what you love and if things like that happen, it shouldn't matter because one of these 21 pieces will be worth the entire portfolio in a couple of years and it won't matter. For sure. I mean, look at this icy by our boy Tom Yu, our speculative oh, bet. Dude, if Tom Yu blows, man, we're going to be on yachts even though I'm never selling his stuff. Never. But- <laughs> never. You, can, you can loan me money against it if you'd like, but like nobody can ever. 
All right, so so let's look at this thing. Someone put this on sale for a thousand bucks. Oh, no. he, he made a global offer. Yeah, obviously. All right. Good luck. So you grabbed it over here, fifteen hundred bucks. Our friend Connor bought it for double that. We'll talk about that on another on another call. What do we got, what do we got for the now? What do we got? Uh, well, we I'll pull it up in the marketplace. Oh, wow. This so, thing jumped. I mean, we're talking about like from December twenty third to February fifteenth, going from two hundred fifty bucks to fifteen hundred bucks. I mean, it's crazy. The other thing to keep in mind is one thing you pointed out, which is that two of the owners of this are the Winklevoss twins, which is hysterical. There are. <laughs> That's so wild. There so, are. like, there's only 13 of these that were minted, right? There's number 13. 17 were burned. So that just shows how early it was in Nifty Gateway because this would never, ever happen now. Everything sells out. This would never happen. Uh, so only 13 were minted. Winklevoss twins are two of those 13. You're the third. So then there's only t- 10 additional. Connor's the fourth. Connor's the fourth. <laughs> Connor overpaid maybe. I mean, lo- again, long-term time horizon, probably not. Nifty Gateway needs to add a link so that I can directly get from right here to the marketplace with all the listings. They definitely need to figure that out. But if I go here, I click on this. Am I going to be able to see it in the marketplace? Actually, I found out a sweet hack. Go back to links. Okay. Click on market history. Okay. Oh, can you do it there? Correct. Lauren's asking me about her taxes because it's tax season. We'll get into that on another episode. Yeah, no, no <laughs> NFT losses. I know that. No NFT losses. So, yeah, so what do we got? So we're looking at there's 13 of these things. Three of them are for sale, and the cheapest one is seven grand. I love right? this, so man. I love if it. If all of a sudden this gets any hype, any, right? Tom Yu comes back, people get excited, they start to see a couple of pieces. Two of them are gone, and the cheapest one's 130 grand. These are, what? You can get the OG for 1000 bucks right now? Yep. That's yep. kind of wild. Yep. Uh, I bought mine for like 600 bucks like a month ago. You can't buy Cactus Jack for any reasonable amount of money. 4750. The Chunky Dunkies <laughs> are going for like 4k. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's Ben and Jerry's. Come on. Come I love on. the Chunky Dunkies. That's crazy. Air Dior 101. Yeah, and it's it's a dancing shoe too. Sir Jones does the old Discord moderator. Wow. That's yeah. gnarly. Yeah. I'm fairly certain he bought them for nothing. So. <laughs> I love Chunky Donkey. Yeah. The OG. I mean, if I wanted to add to the, the collection here, this is a prime opportunity. But because look at the jump, right? I mean, three of these are gone, four of these are gone. Once you hit five, you're at 12K. Right? Like, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. I love it. And then, so if we look at what 888's holding, if you want to get any ideas on what. Unreal to look into and i'll title this video i'm gonna put this video online if that's cool with you i'm gonna put it on youtube all right i'm gonna title it just like nft discussion and then i'll put balte fuocious 888 yeah. tom you those are the the artists that we covered so 888 has as many copies of why would i care i'm just a cat as you and me have nfts correct i believe he has or she over 28 of just one of the most popular pieces on the platform that's nuts. I, I popped on here. I was pleasantly surprised. He's got seven crypto casters by Fuocious, which I was very happy about because I bought this piece at twenty two hundred bucks. The other, What's it at now? I think the floor is like thirty two hundred now, so it's doing well. I was really pleasantly surprised that he's got eleven Eternal Flames. <laughs> And I have that one too. And that one's actually been selling a little bit. So I don't know. That's the cool thing about this space, you know, for two veterans like us that have been in the space for 30 calendar days, 33 (laughs) calendar days or something like that. We know that any given day there can be hype surrounding, not even like a particular artist, but like a particular piece. Like, it's just like, I need to have the crypto caster. It happens so quick. It's nuts. And, and, you know, it can happen with artists too. Like we saw the the bull run of Dot Pigeon the other day, and then now Dot Pigeon's cooling off a little bit. But I think Dot Pigeon will have long term staying power for sure. Think about think about um, Pac, dude. Like you you saw on the Nifty Gateway platform the auction get announced, and then well over a million dollars in secondary sales happened in an hour, buying at ten twelve k a piece. 
it's crazy. <laughs> it's like- I also don't relate. So yeah, thirty three fifty floor on on this piece by Fuocious, which is awesome. I also don't relate to people that are selling pack right now, right after the Sotheby's announcement, when the Beeple auction just happened, and we all know what happened right. there. Like I get the whole strike when the iron is hot, and right now there's the hype. But what if Pac sells for like 20 million bucks for one NFT or whatever? And I think it's probably pretty likely. Yeah, so I just don't understand the need to liquidate this piece for 17.5 right now when you could just not sell it and wait for that auction to happen. I mean, honestly, though, the other thing is if the auction is happening, it's likely that another piece will be auctioned by Pac. Again, I just don't really relate to selling it. Like, I just think hold it like... You know, you're buying That's digital right. art. Do you need 18 grand that bad right now? I mean, I guess if you want to go buy 20 more pieces, but you have one of the blue chip pieces right now. Just wait. Just wait, right? I mean, you look at those people who bought the Beeples for $969, who now, and you see it was their first or second piece, and they bought it for 1000 bucks. They bought Bull Run. And now those people own 100 NFTs. The reason that they own 100 NFTs is because they can leverage against their existing piece that if you look at Bull Run, I think recently, most recently sold for 150 grand, yep. right? So, you know, you look at this and now the idea that somebody would offer this up for $175,000, I think is a tough one. It's hard for me to judge that person. Like, would I do that? Ah, maybe, right? Would, would I allow somebody to pay me 175 grand for people? I'm not sure. I think my gut says that I would never sell it because if he becomes one of the most prolific artists ever, this will be worth millions of dollars. A hundred percent. And speaking of tax stuff, not to get boring here, but it is, you got to think realistically, this thing was created on December 8th. So that's less than a year ago. Obviously it's very recently. So when you sell this, unless you're going to do straight up tax evasion, which I would think is a bad idea when you're selling something for almost 200 grand, this is going to count again, you know, in addition to your income. So even if someone's doing really well, let's say someone's making a million dollars. Now you make a million, one hundred thousand and seventy five, one hundred seventy five thousand bucks. So that's something to think about. Imagine if someone's just a Beeple fan, they make 35 grand, they make 50 grand, they make 75 grand, whatever they make. And they bought this cool Beeple piece for 969 bucks. Exactly. Like you're, you're going to owe so much money in taxes. It's just kind of, I just don't see the, the benefit. I'd rather hold the thing. Obviously, Beeple's not slowing down. He's still posting new pieces on Instagram every day. Unbelievable. They're all sick. He's up to 2 million followers. He's just the man and he's killing it. And I don't understand parting ways with his piece. I'd rather just hold the thing and in my mind think, hey, I got 175K in my net worth that I'm holding in a priceless piece of art, which I think is so cool. Right. And that's the thing. It's like, just hold on to it, right? I think that, I mean, look, if you're buying in this space, you must believe that the liquidity of, the liquidity of these pieces will increase, right? Like, you're at a place right now where there are a ton of early adopters, and by a ton, what, 30 grand, 50,000 people, there's nothing relevant to the size of this potential market. Like, this isn't even an international platform. <laughs> this is, like, primarily a United States platform. That is ridiculous. I there can't so wait. Many international art buyers, right? What happens when they start translating this website into Chinese? Like, it's just going to be a different world, and I think there's going to be an opportunity for, like, huge growth. This is one of the most ridiculous pieces I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted to pull this one up as one that's had, like, a, a pretty ridiculous, like, wild ride. Let's see what the floor is. More paper hands emerged and just kind of barbecued it for everybody else. So, you know, what happened the other day is sort of undone a little bit, but check this out. So this is something that me and and Jay Coin here both bought this pack when it came out. I'm going to say that I bought it by accident because I didn't look at the price tag. No, you didn't. I didn't expect to get it because I thought bots were going to get the pack. And then lo and behold, boom, I get the pack. Again, didn't look at the over $1,000 price tag. The reason I even tried and the reason I thought it would have potential is because the creators of this, Insane Critters, they do Adult Swim and YouTube shows and they have a cult following. And at that time, we were so early in NFTs, I thought that in the immediate to medium term, that would mean something. And basically at this point, I don't think it does considering I bought the Joy, uh, the Justin Roiland you know, co-creator of Rick and Morty drawing yesterday, it's cratering. The stuff that really plays well if you're just looking at a dollars and cents value perspective in the NFT world are like NFT artists, like crypto artists. 
you know, 3D Fantastic. artists, like not people from other spaces like music or TV that come in and do an NFT. So if you're thinking about it like that, I would not, unless unless you just want to own the stuff. Either. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't think of that way. Um, the only difference being fine art, and I think Trevor Jones proved that, is like somebody who comes in from a fine art background and brings that in is very welcomed acceptance into the community versus a celebrity dropping something random that really doesn't have a lot of background in the space or connection to the community, which is the biggest piece of all of this, right? I mean, Dot Pigeon is, is popular both because of the art, but because he's also willing to, to interact with the community. And that's been a huge piece of even people's success is his ability to interact with the community. Um, and I think that's what will grow it. And, you know, we've both seen it, that you can go into Discord and interact with these artists. That's absurd. Yeah. That's absurd. You think you go to a Sotheby's auction and you're going to get to hang out with Picasso? Like, probably not, right? So I, I think that this just changes that in, in a really unique way and makes you feel more connected to it. Straight up. I mean, I think that the whole traditional art world is about how you can hang out with the artist. You're not cool enough to hang out with the artist unless you're super duper rich. So, you know, looking at the price action of this. So, you know, we're getting past the mints. And and keep in mind, this piece was basic or this pack, this drop was basically yep. the laughing stock of the NFT community on Discord. Like people were always referencing how bad Critters was doing. I had a theory when that happened that it was going to be so bad that it's good and it started to come to fruition a little bit. Wow. So this thing actually did sell for above initial drop price a little bit, which is nuts to think about. Also, do we think that the last mint has value similar to the first mint? I don't think it's quite the same, but I think for some reason people seem to love it. I don't understand why, to be totally honest with you. Um I understand the sub 10 mint excitement, single digit mint excitement. Like that makes sense to me. I think for really high minted pieces, like the lower, the better getting the last one. I, I still don't really understand the allure. I mean, straight up, it, it kind of looks, looks cool. Nice. 150 out of 150, but no, I agree with you. Um, all right. So we're seeing some paper hands pretty quickly develop on this. One guy bought that 150 out of 150 for two grand, but definitely seeing a lot of paper hands when you go back it just starts to absolutely crater like within one day it drops to like 700 gets down to 550 like in no time it's selling for like you know 450 people are just offloading it by any means necessary buying it you know selling it for 400 oh it's just like ugly and it's also not even selling that well after a certain point but then but then if you look to 2 days ago it looks like a group of people in in concert with one another or just the same person with multiple accounts came through and started buying up, sweeping the floor, 500, 550, 550, 555, 577, 600, 645, 666, 777. And then, and this is, you know, either five different accounts or five different people just coming through and really raising the floor, like a little mini bull run. I can't call it a bull run because it hasn't even gotten back to what it initially yeah, cost sure. yet. Sure. But a solid amount of splims coming off the market. The problem is that paper hands are now back because they saw that action and they're like, all right, cool. Well, I'll liquidate it for, for what I can get for it, which again, I, I would never do. Uh, but I think that, you know, there's more story to tell with this piece right. and it's going to be interesting to see if someone comes through and buys up the floor again. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. And I think that's what I'm, I'm wondering too, is some of the limited edition pieces, right? It's like when interest comes, when there is a really significant interest in one piece, what happens and how does that just drastically change the landscape? And I think both of you, both you and I understand that at some point, there's going to be this significant demand for one or two of the pieces in our portfolio. And that I think is what's going to change everything is we're making a somewhat broad based bet, an educated one. Um, and then we wait. And if one takes off, none of this matters, right? You pour 10, 20 grand into this, but then you start to think, well, what if one of them is a prolific artist then that piece is worth 2 million bucks? <laughs> what if that's where it gets exciting. Right. And I think the art world is probably bigger than both you and I realize internationally. Right. I mean, we're talking about a small subset of Discord users of 30,000 people. Like, that's nothing. Nothing. And that, that's where it gets exciting. It's like, how do, we, how do we get 
broader interest in this and how do you make this more accessible to everyone because that benefits both of us straight up and you're already seen it with nba top shot that discord is an absolute dumpster fire it's just a disaster so i'm actually not looking forward to discord once that happens with nifty gateway but i am looking forward to the market you know performance i will finish on this one this is the one with the typo in it that you got which is the second best one in the pack and yet this one yeah literally a typo this one's also you know cratering even this one, Blingo or whatever, it's like barely even like you can buy it for less than what the pack costs no now. Liquidity. No, liquidity. no liquidity. No. Right, people don't want this, right? <laughs> but you list one of your Bitcoin angels for five thousand bucks and it's gonna be gone in thirty minutes. Yeah. Right? And so when you start to think about that as a percentage of your portfolio, it's one piece, you bought it for a thousand bucks, it's worth five times that. It's actually the size of twenty five percent of your existing investment. And so that that's why none of this scares me, is because if you can make a couple of smart decisions, Bitcoin Angel faces Genesis, faces in the future, but Genesis, Bitcoin Angel, like then you're starting to sit in a situation where, wow, like I have highly liquid pieces that will sell for a multiple of what I had before, and you know, that's your safety net. I couldn't agree more. I think that you got the right idea there. All right, well, this is our first one. I'm, I'm pretty fatigued from doing this this chat, but good stuff. We'll do it again. Jcoin, Crypto PO, we're out. I don't know how to stop recording. Very good. I don't know. That was good, though. I thought it was good, too. Once you get talking, like, it doesn't matter, right? And, you start, and I think what it'll help you is...